Let's go, girls. <laughs> da, 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 da. Is that the song? Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Shania Twain, baby. Shania Twain. Okay. We need to do the warm-up. We need to do the warm-up. Okay, ready? Three, yeah. two, one. Brr, brr, ma, ma, ma. Do you feel warm? Uh, I feel gay. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. Um, well, hello, everyone, and welcome to Outside the Search Bar, the podcast where we try to answer questions without using Google. So as you may be able to tell, Emily is not on the podcast. That's not her voice. That is actually the voice of Emily, Ryan Gabbett, Shubak. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Ryan Gabbett, my co-host from Gay Court, is joining us this week because Emily, unfortunately, is sick and her voice is not ready to record a podcast at this time. So luckily, we have been graced by Mr. Ryan Gabbett. Ryan, how the hell are you? I'm good. I'm here. I'm still queer. Get <laughs> used to it. Beautiful. We've been on podcasts all week this week. I know. We it's our like, recording them. taping. Should we, should we tape one right after this later for gay yeah, court? Let's just keep taping them. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, it's Kiki Palmer. <laughs> oh, my God. We need to do a Kiki Palmer episode. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> um, so each week, Emily and I normally come with questions that we don't know the answers to. Of course, Ryan will be bringing a question to the table today. Um, and we each have notes on our phones that are filling up with an astounding number of questions, which is truly a testament to how little we actually know. Of course, we would be remiss to not take listener questions. Y'all keep sending them. We'll keep answering them. So if you have a tough question you'd like us to answer on the podcast, send us an email to searchbarpodcast at gmail.com or follow us on social at searchbarpodcast. Additionally, we normally have a guest. I am both the co-host and the guest host today. Ryan is more in triple duty. So Ryan, Mm -hmm. what's something you searched for recently? Tell me about it. Actually, let's see. What was my last searched question? <laughs> let's see. Mine is literally always Wordle. Wordle. <laughs> and like something, some like eHow article about how to like fix my sink or something. Oh, I Googled how to make a calamansi margarita. Oh, and do you know how to now? Yes. I need to make it next week. That's why. Oh. I needed to find what ingredients I needed. I have no idea what's in a calamansi margarita. Well, calamansi and you make sense tequila. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what calamansi is? Not a clue. Please, please educate me. <laughs> it's like a Filipino citrus. It's sort of like a a lime lemon sort of thing. Interesting. I I feel like I've been seeing it everywhere. Like I feel like there's a Starbucks calamansi drink. Or like something in Trader Joe's. That's like oh, are they product. gentrifying it now? Like Ube? Probably. <laughs> mm, okay. That's fun. <laughs> Not well, great, but you know. <laughs> uh, Drag Race Philippines comes out next week. And I'm hosting a little shindig at my new place. AKA a viewing party. Hence why it's going to be Filipino food and Filipino drinks. I love that. What else, what else is on the menu? Um, Seasig. Do you know what that is? Nope. <laughs> just think like a shit ton of just like fried pork belly covered in like with vegetables and like a sauce sort of thing so Incredible. good and lumpia oh, oh, we love is, lumpia right? okay you know what i was like you know what that is yes. right <laughs> my friend joet makes literally the best lumpia and it's oh, like my mouth is watering thinking of it <laughs> what kind of lumpia is it the thicker one or the thinner one the thinner one okay the shanghai those at least the in best. my at least in my memory <laughs> those are those are the better ones i will say <laughs> Because they're just like, you just pop it in your mouth and chew. I know. <laughs> and, or you can like, like you dip it. In, a, in, the, in the, the sauce. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's delicious. <laughs> um, I will be attending the party, I guess. Um, I'll come all the way to New York for that. Sure. Okay, sure. Come, come, come. <laughs> just coming through. It's um, a Wednesday night. <laughs> <laughs> we love a Wednesday night. All right. Well, that takes us now to our first segment, which is called What's Trending? where we look at the latest Google search trends from the week and discuss them. So this week's topic of discussion is that Kim Kardashian and Peter Davidson broke up. Do you think it's true for Peter or is it just Pete? Is it Pietro? Let's see. (laughs) Should we we, we we Google Google it? it? (laughs) Yes. Let's see. We should Google it. Pete Davidson's name is short for Peter, 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 Peter Michael Davidson. 
Peter Michael Davidson. That's actually kind of like a really nice name. Like his parents did a great job with that name. Peter. Hmm, who would have thought? Peter. Well, his name is Pete, so it wasn't very uh wasn't yeah. very it wasn't a long shot. <laughs> it wasn't a stretch. It was not a stretch. <laughs> it was like it could be that. Uh so what do you think about the Kardashian and Davidson breakup? Well, I always found their relationship interesting. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you think it was a PR relationship? Yeah. I feel like at first I thought it was a PR relationship, but then like he was on the Hulu series and I'm like, hmm. at least he's in the trailer for season two, but I'm like, hmm. well, like my favorite tweets from this week were like, oh, you know, they're filming a finale. <laughs> 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 that was one of them. And the second one was like, True. just Chris Jenner leaked the Donald Trump um, drama so that P- Kim and Pete's breakup will just be in the lower part of the news. <laughs> Just completely just pushed it to the side. They were like, exactly. FBI well, baby. <laughs> uh, we work hard, but Chris Jenner always works harder. Yes, she really does. She's truly the mastermind behind so many PR schemes. And <laughs> she things. has a mind of a mastermind. <laughs> she has a mind of a mastermind. <laughs> <laughs> you just got Chris Jenner. <laughs> you just got Chris. Mm-hmm. Wow, Chris Jenner makes an appearance in both, or appearance, um, a mention in both podcasts this week. I think it's just further proof that we need to be in contact with her so she can run PR for our podcasts. Mm. It's a common mm. common thread here, it seems. What drama would she cause between both podcasts? <laughs> she would have our podcasts fight each other. <laughs> you'd, you, you'd fight yourself. Or one of us would just start dating Pete Davidson. We look at Emily. <laughs> <laughs> She's the only one who's single. Or no, would, Emily's not single. I'm not single. You're single. But why would I date Pete Davidson? For PR. <laughs> oh, fair. Okay. I mean, we can change it to anyone you want. If you prefer it to be someone who's gay, we could also do that. Mm. Like, who's gay? <laughs> name a gay person. <laughs> For a toddler, name a gay person. <laughs> um, I was going to say Holland Taylor. <laughs> but she's dating Sarah Paulson, right? She is. <laughs> so maybe not her. Um. Oh, oh, Jonathan Groff. That could be fun. Isn't he dating someone? The theater. <laughs> <laughs> the theater. He's dating the theater. Isn't he on Broadway? You love Broadway. Could I be do a thing. love Broadway. He's going to be apparently, allegedly, in the revival with Daniel Radcliffe of Merrily We Roll Along. Oh, never saw the first part of it, but great. <laughs> what? Like, I never saw the initial run of it, so oh, when you say the revival, like, it doesn't mean anything to me. <laughs> from, like, the 70s? Yeah. Yes. I wasn't there in the 70s, unfortunately. Me neither. Um, well, all of that said... Wait, what are your thoughts on the breakup? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the breakup. Um, I did initially... Yeah, I thought, I thought it was a PR relationship, and then it seemed to become a little bit more real. So it is kind of, like, sad, because I was like, they're kind of cute together. He got her to wear sneakers? There's that. Wait, he got her to wear sneakers? Like, around. Remember how... There was, like, this whole, like, meme, like, oh, my God, he got her to wear, like, sneakers, like, out instead of wearing, like, heels or something like that. I was like, okay, whatever. Let's get Kim Kardashian a pair of Crocs. (laughs) (laughs) Um, All that to say, though, um, best of luck to Kim and Pete. I hope that they find what they're looking for and love each other. We'll see in season three. Yeah. (laughs) They said that they want (laughs) to remain friends, so I think it'll be okay. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, Well, with that, it's time for our first listener question. Ooh. So this listener question comes from Aaron G. Hi, Aaron G. (laughs) Hi, Aaron G. We love you. (laughs) So the subject was body questions. And the copy of the email said, hello, I want to start by saying I love your podcast. Y'all are so funny. Honestly, this email is off to an excellent start. (laughs) (laughs) I'm thoroughly impressed by um, this opening, this intro paragraph. Um, So my questions. One, I was sitting on the floor playing with my adorable dogs when I suddenly, when suddenly as I go to stand up, boom, my legs are asleep. So I wondered what is actually happening when your legs fall asleep? And two, as I was thinking of this, I also thought of how sometimes at night I'll wake up with a random awful Charlie horse. How did these work and why with five wise are they so gosh dang painful thanks Aaron g also i want it to be clear that i did not censor that they really said so gosh dang painful which i believe is the most charming and beautiful thing i've ever heard <laughs> we love Aaron. can we see pictures of your dogs your adorable dogs 
Yes, we need to see the dog pics. I'll follow up via email. <laughs> Wait, can you send me a picture of your dog? <laughs> we'll post it on Instagram. <laughs> um, okay, so starting with the first one, legs asleep. What is actually happening when your legs fall asleep? Ryan, I know you're a doctor, so I'm assuming <laughs> <laughs> a doctor of pharmacy, but I'm assuming that you have some knowledge of the body and maybe this came up in a class at some point. Legs and hips and body, body. That's all that was playing in my head. But um, <laughs> <laughs> Body, body, bodies featuring Charlie um, XCX. Girl, I don't know. I think it's something to do with nerves. Like something about like, not pinched nerves per se, but like. I guess like when you're like, because when you're sitting, you're in a position where like the nerve, like the blood flow are going to all the nerves. Mm. So I was, gonna, I was gonna say it's probably due to bl- blood circulation because like it's cutting off mm-hmm. and there's no more blood, so there's no more oxygen at whatever. Mm. I don't know nerve ending. I didn't get mm. to the nerves. I didn't get to the nerves. I was just like blood and oxygen. But now you brought in the nerves, so therefore, without oxygen, the nerves can't work. And it feels weird. (laughs) It feels tingly. Because your nerves aren't functioning at their full capacity? Or is it them screaming, we want oxygen, we want blood? (laughs) Oh. Does that sound like so right? (laughs) (laughs) That sounds like really true. Are we like smart? I think we're scientists. Oh my God. I feel like we got it right on like the first try. Like, should we just Google it? Sure. Okay, guys, so I googled what is actually happening when your legs fall asleep. Mm. So our source today is an article called Why or What Is It Called When Your Foot Falls Asleep from UPMC Healthbeat. I have no idea what UPMC stands for, but it looks like some type of university thing. University of Pennsylvania's Medical Center. I don't know. I'll click on it. I'll find out what the actual source is. It doesn't really say anywhere on this website what UMPC stands for. There's no about section. Oh, let's click on their Instagram. They have an Instagram? They have an Instagram. That also just says UPMC Health. <laughs> so <laughs> there's no real understanding of what UPMC stands for, but we'll just trust it anyways. Okay. Um, so the technical term for when a limb falls asleep is called paresthesia, and it occurs when sustained pressure causes one or more of the nerves in a body to become compressed. Interesting. So I guess oh, like, like you're- a, Like a pinched nerve? <laughs> yeah, you're like squishing your nerve. And this temporarily interferes with the nerve's ability to communicate with your brain. Mm. As a result, you experience numbness in the affected limb, along with a sensation of burning, tingling, skin crawling, or pins and needles, as the National Institute of Health describes it. So I guess it's just that you're squishing your nerves. And they're like, Bitch, get off me. I feel like UPMC, we've already established, we don't know what that stands for. I feel like there's also something to do with blood and they're just not telling us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, UPMC.com. Mm-hmm. Like, I can't figure out on the website. Like, there's nothing that says what it stands for. There's no about sex. They have a podcast. <laughs> Call them up. We're like, what does UPMC stand for? Literally, I can't figure it out. Oh, it's in Pittsburgh. Is it University of Pittsburgh Medical Center? Yeah, it seems like that. Mm. Now we know. Mm. The more you know. I was close. <laughs> so the second question is, sometimes I'll wake up at night with a random awful Charlie horse. How do these work and why are they so gosh darn painful? So my first question is, what is a Charlie horse? <laughs> do you, you never had one? I've heard the term, but I is it like your thigh or your foot? Well, it could be like, it's usually in your leg, somewhere in your leg. Like usually mine's my calf, you know, okay. like when you like overextend your muscle and then suddenly it just hurts, like mm-hmm. the most excruciating pain you've ever experienced. Okay. Yeah. I've I'm asking that. you, do you know, have you ever felt it? I'm asking you. <laughs> I, don't, I don't feel like I feel that regularly. <laughs> well, it, you don't, you don't feel it regularly. It's usually just randomly. Uh, okay. Yes. I've felt that in my life before. Yes. Um, usually for me, it's when I overwork the muscle or like I overextend it and push it to its limits, then I get the Charlie horse. One time when I was growing up, I woke up and my foot had that type of excruciating pain and it mm-hmm. felt like both sides of my feet were trying to like come together and touch each other. Yes. And it really, really hurt and I didn't like it. 
Yes. Um, I have no idea why that happened, but I really just like needed to like get up out of bed and like walk it off basically. Right. Like stretch it out almost Mm -hmm. and like walking it off type. Yeah. So like a little bit of that. So it feels like to me, (laughs) the muscle was like really tightened and angry. I think it's something to do with like, is it, is it like a lack of like oxygen? And you, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, it's a lack of oxygen. Well, like, okay, when I had my, like, I just woke up and it happened. Like, it wasn't yeah. like I was, I don't think I was laying on anything weird. Like, I've been falling asleep and like laid on my arm funny and woken up with my arm asleep. It felt different than like your arm being asleep. <laughs> Which I guess we just mm-hmm. talked about was not actually caused by an oxygen deficiency. <laughs> Hmm. so is this on the oxygen deficiency okay well what does stretching do for your muscles does that bring oxygen to your muscles to help them or well stretching makes them more flexible so you don't overextend or anything and like hurt your muscles or, or like rip them oh uh, but aren't you supposed to rip them to build muscle well yeah but like that's like <laughs> precise <laughs> but it's more like you don't like fully like oh i ripped my tendon like you know what i mean mm-hmm. yeah that's fair like the Achilles heel, like that sort of thing. Okay, so what is our hypothesis? I say oxygen, a lack of oxygen <laughs> due to strenuous work, overextension, and overexertion. I'm going to agree. <laughs> 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 that sounds right to me. And I can't think of any other reason like why your muscles would just cramp up like that. I mean, I guess... Mm. That's really just like the definition of a cramp, but we'll figure it out. All right. Mm. Um, oh, I just searched. What is a trolley horse? Um, okay. It spells it C H R L E Y, which I always would have considered it as with an I E, but apparently it's not. So this is just the Google data portal. Like it popped up with the answer, and it says a trolley horse is a sudden involuntary contraction of one or more muscles. A cramp. We just said the word cramp. Often in the legs. A Charlie horse is often due to long exercise or physical labor, especially in the heat. Ooh. Mm. Dehydration, age, pregnancy, and certain medical conditions may increase the risk of a Charlie horse. It's very harmless and it often awakens a person at night. Massage can help relieve the pain. Hmm. Overexertion. Overexertion. <laughs> <laughs> we knew it. Um, I'm interested in like why though it happens at night. Isn't that because that's when your body's recovering? That makes sense. (laughs) (laughs) And that's why you're a doctor. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Well, hopefully those have answered your questions, Erin G. We love being scientists on this podcast. We learn so much about the body and everything else. So if you all have any other questions, feel free to send us an email to searchbarpodcast at gmail.com. Show us pics of your dogs. Yes, show us pics of your dogs. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and keep writing cute little letters that are like, we love your podcast. It really builds my ego to no degree. <laughs> that takes us to the bread and the butter, the toast and the jam of the podcast. I made that last phrase up. The question and answer. So we've each... Pre- the steak and the potatoes. Sorry. The what? <laughs> the, st- the steak and potatoes. The steak and potatoes. The fries and ketchup. Ew. You You know I don't like ketchup. (laughs) That's true. You prefer an aioli. Yes, I love a good mayo. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So we've both prepared some questions to answer today. And stick with us because Emily has also submitted a question. So for any of you Emily stands out there, don't worry. (laughs) She'll still be involved in this episode (laughs) in some way. (laughs) Um, Ryan, what question did you bring to the podcast? My question is, what is dry cleaning? And is it dry? <laughs> like, what is it? Why do you like, say these things do? when I'm drinking? Because <laughs> I can. Um, so what prompted this question for you? Like, what were you like? Oh, dry clean. What's up with that? <laughs> well, I pass by many dry cleaners occasionally. And they're always in the... And I like looking, of course, because, you know, I'm nosy. <laughs> but... um. Fair. <laughs> and I just see, like, tons of them on the racks. And they're on that machine that, like, goes around, right? Uh-huh. You know what yeah. I mean? Oh, this is the gavel, if you're wondering. But uh, <laughs> Ryan has his gavel from gay court in the scene, if you're not watching. But um, it's just more like, 
it can't be a spray because isn't a spray not dry? Oh, that does make sense. Dry cleaning. So then like, why is it called dry cleaning? Because if they use a spray or some sort of mist, isn't that considered wet? Moist? Uh, wet? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is also pretty... Like, I've never seen the back of a dry cleaner. A dry cleaner. Like, do they do anything? Actually, I did. Or do, they, do they just, like, spray with Febreze? <laughs> but then that's also a spray. <laughs> okay. I actually watched a Netflix series called War and Stories. That was all about, like, people telling stories about, like, clothing that they wore during, like, significant moments in their life. So there's people who are like, I wore these shorts when I walked across Antarctica. Or I wore... Sure, <laughs> whatever <laughs> whatever <laughs> not that um and then there was a, a series like a bit like not a bit uh what do you call it a segment about um a dry cleaners in las vegas because they always had to dry clean a bunch of like different costumes and outfits that being said do i remember anything from that documentary absolutely not yes oh. <laughs> <laughs> but from my memory and what i'm i don't know planting in it I would say that it's like a big press of like two heated plates that you just press it down and it burns off any germs or dirtiness. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) That makes sense. Yes. I've seen a machine. I've seen like the machine where it kind of goes through. So it's kind of like that weird, like it's not like a press, but I think it's a heated. Isn't it heated? Wait, they go go through like an oven. Isn't it like a like a rotisserie chicken type deal? Not like this one, but more like this one. Oh, so it's like it's like the coat hangers, a conveyor belt, a conveyor belt, but for like coat hangers. Yeah, and just like takes them through the machine. I think. Oh, so. maybe they use, or did I just make it up? I don't know. <laughs> maybe they use like UV rays because mm. like that kills germs, right? Uh huh. The only reason I know that is from like biology class when they like made you put your goggles in the UV thing to kill the germs. Whenever I do dry cleaning of like my suits, they always have a smell that smells like dry cleaning. So like, what is the smell? Would you say the dry cleaning smells like a dryer sheet? No, it smells gross, actually. (laughs) (laughs) It's not a pleasant smell, but it's not like a horrible smell. It's like, it smells clean, but it smells like chemically clean. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. It's not like a Tide. It's more like a, is there chemicals on this? (laughs) (laughs) We just spritz some chemicals on it. Which also is a liquid, not dry. Yes. Uh, so do they do they put it in an oven and like sprinkle it like salt bay? Oh, that make that might make sense. Like maybe they put like a little bit of like dry detergent on it, and then they just put it through something warm. Ooh. That feels like a good hypothesis. That is my hypothesis. Then. <laughs> Any other final thoughts about like what it could be? Why do they cost so much? But okay, that is actually <laughs> a great question because it is expensive. Okay. Like, why does, like, cleaning my suit cost, like, $45? <laughs> Great question. Okay, so today's source is LiveScience.com. And mm. this is an article that was published in 2018 called What is Dry Cleaning? by Rachel Ross. Not Rachel Ray. <laughs> Not Rachel Ray. <laughs> Two bottoms and no top. That's no party. <laughs> <laughs> um, unfortunately, I have some news for you. Despite the name, dry cleaning is a process that uses liquids other (gasps) other than water to clean clothes, bedding, upholstery, and other types of fabric. Water can damage certain fabrics, so dry cleaning chemicals are used to help resolve that issue of water damaging things. So dry cleaners use a variety of solvents um, to clean fabric. Oh my God. Early solvents included gasoline kerosene, benzene, turpentine, and petroleum, which were very flammable <laughs> and dangerous. <laughs> okay, so that was that was be- that was like before like the 1930s. Um, okay. So then the 1930s saw the development of synthetic non-flammable solvents such as perco percolor it's not good when you can't say it. Percolina the chloric acid. Percor- perchlor- <laughs> Can you put it in this, in this doc and I'll Perchlora read it? Perchloroethylene, I think is what it's pronounced. Um, here, that's, there's a there's a, in chat now. Let's see. Uh, perchloroethylene, yeah. Okay. Good job. And decamethylcyclopentasiloxine, also known as green earth, which are still used today. 
Um, so these detergents aid the dry cleaning in three ways. One, they carry moisture to aid in the removal of water-soluble soils. Two, they suspend soil after it has been removed from the fabric so it won't be reabsorbed. And three, it acts as a spotting agent to penetrate the fabric so that solvents will be able to remove the stains. Interesting. So they spray it and the dirt just falls off? Um, here's the process, okay. Oh, okay. The holding tank or base tank holds the solvent. The pump circulates the solvent through the machine. So I guess it's literally like they put it into a machine. Mm -hmm. Um, Filters trap the solid impurities and soils from that were removed um, from re-entering the fabric and a cylinder or wheel where the items are being cleaned um, rotates the clothes during the process to mix that shit up. <laughs> so it's just a, like a giant washing machine with no water, just chemicals. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And apparently they take the mm-hmm. excess solvent and like filter it and transfer it back into the holding tank so they can reuse it. Mm. Mm. And that's why I don't wear suits often. Yes. So apparently they were using gasoline to clean clothes <laughs> before the 30s, which a choice, but you know, I guess. You only live once. <laughs> Do you feel like um, your question has been sufficiently answered? Yes. Do I like the answer that I got? No, because it's kind of gross, actually. (laughs) I wonder if there's like organic. (laughs) Organic Organic dry cleaning that doesn't have like harsh chemicals and like things like that. But see, I told you it's like it it smells smells like chemicals. Yeah. Yeah. It it smells clean. It just kind of smells like chemicals. It feels like they should put it through like a Febreze spray on the way out, you know, put a, put a little perfume yeah. on there, just do a little something to make it, you know, not smell like chemicals. A little Tom Ford, mm-hmm. a little Santal 33. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. So my question is, how do we know how much money there is and why don't we just lie about it? Because like, I understand like at the global scale, You can't just print a bunch of United States dollars because that would make it less valuable as compared to like the Euro. But I'm like, who is report? Like, why doesn't the United States government just be like, Oh, we don't have any, like there's only $26 in circulation. So it's really valuable. I have a random question. Yeah. What goes through my mind? (laughs) No, like, you know, like when like the American financial like system was created, by Alexander Hamilton. No. Is, he I like didn't created know that. the financial system. That's not what I took away from that musical. <laughs> he like created the, the yes. He, okay. Anyway. <laughs> really? I didn't know that. Yes, he created the financial system of America. That's why they can't that's why there's a whole part of the end where like, yeah, we tried to change it, but we couldn't. Hmm. <laughs> I don't anyway. think I like him. Anyways, go on. So when America was first created, there is a yes. certain amount of money, right? That was first used to uh, fund America, but fund America. Mm-hmm. Technically, because we kept printing money, the value of that money like decreased. So are you saying that now we still are using the same amount of money that Alexander Hamilton created back when he first created the financial system, but it has just gotten less valuable because we have printed more because America has kept growing since then. Girl. So like, <laughs> <laughs> like it's the half a penny that he created is now worth like $20 now. No, I don't think that makes sense. Maybe I literally, the, the lowest grade I ever got in college was in economics or I think it was microeconomics. I got a B minus. I don't understand this stuff at all. Money is made up. It's all fake. It is. It doesn't make any sense to me. Ask Alexander Hamilton. Alexander Hamilton, what's going on? Um, But in terms of how do we know how much money there is, I would assume that someone at the United States Treasury is like, I don't know, like when they go to the printer, they like hit print 20 copies. And then they're just like adding that to a spreadsheet and be like, we printed 20 copies today. (laughs) And that's how it works. My, yes. (laughs) (laughs) But then I'm like, how do they know how much is originally there? And how do they know how much is destroyed? Because like, I'm, I am I know it's illegal to destroy money. I'm not saying that we're going to destroy money. But like, shit me happens. Looking, like, people burn money. Dollar I ripped. Yeah. People okay. rip money. It's paper. So like, 
it's gonna get destroyed and like it's not like we're using the same dollar bills as like the 1800s so how do they take them out of circulation and put is it because there's like a circulation date on them is there is <laughs> I'm I'm like, like, i don't carry like, money with, with me like, with, i have a 20 dollar bill one second <laughs> okay great 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 we have we have a live money <laughs> on the podcast today here's my 20 okay and does it have it does have a date on it right um this note is legal tender mm. <laughs> <laughs> for all debts debts public and private treasurer of the united states series 2017 okay so it does have a date on it at least i'm like let me look at other bills um i was gonna say i would assume that when they put money into circulation they do it through banks um and that's how they also would take the the money out of circulation so whenever somebody like submits like a bill from 1980 it scans the little barcode that's on it or whatever little number is on it and it's like ah this money has got to go in the trash pile and that's how they take things out of circulation how do banks work (laughs) <laughs> I literally don't know. I don't know how literally I don't know how any money works. This is not my strong suit, which is why I had this question. Um, another question that I have is a lot of our banking is like digital now. So like you can see on your Bank of America app, like I have $12 and like it's just like a virtual number. Mm-hmm. And like it's not physical. But is like anything physical I, in this state and age. <laughs> In this simulation that we might be living in, is anything physical? Maybe. Um, no, but my question is, like, if you added up everybody's bank accounts, is there an equal amount of paper dollars? No. No? No. That sounds bad. Isn't that why we're in a recession? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, our understanding of economics because, like, is not the, good. Because, like, like, in 2000, was it 2007 when, like, the stock yeah, market Yeah, 2007, happened? 2008. Yeah. And like people are going to all the banks to get their money out. They're, the banks didn't have enough physical cash. cash to give the people. Oh. That's why the lines were so long. Got it. Oh, interesting. So, but like, why? How did that happen? Like, how did we transition from like there being physical money to there being digital money? Well, hasn't there always been digital money with the banks? Because like you deposit your money. So you put your money in your account, mm-hmm. but that but the physical cash you gave the teller is just a twenty dollar bill they'll give to the next person when they take out twenty dollars. Ooh, ooh! I don't, I don't think banks are good. <laughs> 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 this seems like a little confusing to me. I'm like, <laughs> something about that like not adding up. Like somebody's just like, give me all your money. They put it in a big pile, and we have just buildings with big piles of money in them. Like, where? yeah. That's what That's, a bank is. I, I get it now. Like, like you don't put your the twenty dollars you give them into your account. That's nothing. Your account just has the money that you the money that you have, but the the physical cash you gave the teller means nothing to what you have. It's just a twenty dollar bill they can give the next person. Okay, I get it. So basically, what I'm hearing is that money is made up. <laughs> yes, we love that for us. Um, so, in terms of answering the question of how much money <laughs> there is. Um, let's, let's just guess how much money there is. And that can be, (laughs) that can be our hypothesis because I have no idea how to answer this. Um, I'm going to guess that there's 15 trillion United States dollars in circulation. How much of, um, how much of a debt do we have? Oh, it's like 20 20 (laughs) trillion or something like that. It's a lot. It's a lot. So if it's say it's like, I feel like it's, isn't it like 23 trillion or did I make that? It's probably made that up. That sounds, it's something high, sounds, right? It's, I feel like it goes up every single day. So yeah. Yeah. After this, this um, taping, it's probably at 57 trillion, <laughs> but um, I will say this, just the $20 <laughs> bill. Just a single $20 bill. I don't know. I would say 25 trillion. <laughs> Incredible. Okay, so I googled, how do we know how much money there is? Um, and this is from money.howstuffworks.com, an article that was updated in 2021. According to the Federal Reserve, there was $5.8 trillion in the M0 supply stream as of March 2021. That sounds like an incredible amount, but think of it this way. According to the U.S. Census, there's 332 million people in the United States. So if you took that out and divided it up equally amongst, amongst each person, everyone should have about $17,000 um, on cash. 
So $17,000 per person. That's a lot of money. Unfortunately, it seems like some of that money is missing um, between one half and two thirds of that. A lot of it is one, one half and two thirds of it is held overseas. Do we have any idea how the government works or finances? No. <laughs> this feels like a larger episode waiting to happen. <laughs> as, all told, for anyone looking for all U.S. dollars in the world, as of May 2021, you could expect to find approximately $19.9 trillion in existence. So like in between our two numbers. In between our two numbers. So I guess we were kind of right. Um, oh my God. This is like very complicated. This is like a first for the podcast where I'm just like, what is the answer? Because like I literally am reading this and I don't understand the economics of what's going on here. I'm like, I need to find an easier article. Okay. I found a Quora answer that I think makes a little bit of sense to me. So once upon a time, our government printed money based on precious metals, the gold standard, but there wasn't enough gold to match the economic output of the nation. Therefore, we were forced to abandon the gold standard and print money backed by the full faith and credit of the government. So again, money's a scam. It's made up. It's not based on anything. It's really just based on vibes. (laughs) Okay, let me read more. Basically, it is the money borrowed from the Federal Reserve. So as long as the amount of money printed does not exceed the economic output of the nation, it has value. When it exceeds that output, the money printed is worth less. It takes more to purchase the same products and services. Got it. Girl, I don't know what any of this shit means. Is that um, why we're in a reset? Is that why we have like money to owed? Do probably. Mm, okay. I don't know where money's even here. Um, that all being said. Did you get your question answered? I feel like kind of. It was a really complicated question, I feel. I fully understand how money is made up. And um, what I got from this question is we should probably take an economics class. We should probably take an economics class. To learn more. <laughs> we need to get an economics podcast person on here to be like, huh? <laughs> What's that all about? I got questions. Um, so stay tuned for that guest judge. We're just going to go right into the final question. So the final question comes from our dear friend, Emily, who asked our sister Lizzie for the actual question. Um, And Lizzie asked, why are benches in honor of people and how do you get that done? Um, So she's obviously referring to benches in public parks and national forests probably have them too, that are dedicated to a specific person or a couple or whoever it may be. I know Central Park has a bunch of them dedicated to people and it is a process. Um, to make those benches happen, I guess. Print the plaque. (laughs) (laughs) My initial guess is that you could probably put down a bench in a public park and no one would notice. So I think if you really wanted to, like you could just do it. I don't know that the parks and recreation department would be like, oh, like there's another bench here. But then if they did know, wouldn't they be like, now there's evidence that your name is on it. (laughs) (laughs) just sign your crime (laughs) okay okay so maybe it wasn't the best it wasn't the best scheme um but like come on you see those tiktoks of like the kids putting up posters of themselves in mcdonald's and stuff like why can't i put a park bench in that just says jacob (laughs) jacob jacob s it just says jacob s it could be anybody Okay, so I'm assuming that the actual process would entail you going to the Parks and Recreation Department and being like, hey, I'd like to purchase a bench in X, Y, and Z park. And then they would be like, okay, well, to get a bench, you'd have to donate $2,000 to buy the bench. And that includes the cost of what it costs to, I don't know, what do you call it? To the bench? To, what's the word? To dedicate it to. Mm. (laughs) That's my initial hypothesis. What do you think? I think it's around the same thing. There's, I think there, I'm pretty sure it has to be an application, right? I would assume there's an application that you're able right? to just... Like, do you think that people are like, oh, I'm doing this for my loving wife, Dana, <laughs> who I've been married to for 35 years. Do you think they like donate it or do they just buy it? 
Well, I think the the buying is a donation. Well, fair. That is true. Yeah. But do you think like since it's a public Is it tax deductible? <laughs> probably. Probably. Do you think the um like since it's a public park, do you think you have to go to like I don't know, like a city council meeting and be like, I have a petition for my wife Dana, who we made up, to put a bench in her honor in this park. Do you think the council has to like approve that? I'm pretty sure they have to uh, approve, yeah. There's an application process where they have to approve it, but I don't think you physically have to go there. Oh, okay. So you don't think it's like a legal thing where you have to like legally go there and be like, I am part of this public park now. (laughs) It could be a thing you don't know. I don't know. Let's get Amy Poehler on this. Get Amy Poehler up in this bitch. Um, Do you think it's a monetary or a monthly fee or a... Do you think you could after pay it? I feel like it's like an all all down, like all in, like Mm -hmm. here here are all my chips. Yeah, that makes sense because like they're not going to print the whole thing and then if you pay like $20 for one month, what are they going to do? Like throw away the bench that has Dana's (laughs) name inscribed on it? Well, yeah, they could. They just take off the plaque. (laughs) It's just a plaque. (laughs) Aww. Damn. Aw, Dana. Dana. <laughs> That's kind of sad though that they would just take it off. If do would they take off a, a bench that's already dedicated if they don't have any more? It's a good question. I feel like hmm, how long do like how long do they keep the bench? Like, yeah, like say like all their benches are kind of for they all been dedicated for some reason. Mm-hmm. There's one more person that wants to dedicate it. Do they just put a new bench somewhere or do they take off the dedication from another person? I would assume the goal would be to create another bench as opposed to taking it away from someone because that seems humane. <laughs> <laughs> but in a place like Central Park where so many people would potentially want to do that, there's a limit to the number of benches because otherwise the park would just be benches. So I wonder if like when you make your donation like you make the donation for 10 years for 20 years for 50 years and like that's how it works and mm-hmm. then it would be like a one in one out like there'd be like a waiting list for like when this person's donation bench expires. three is <laughs> bench three is available <laughs> bench three is... Ooh, a little dark but maybe true <laughs> all right so i'm gonna google it but our hypothesis is that you had to buy it through the parks and recreation department <laughs> Um, ooh, theparkcatalog.com. Um, memorial benches. This is from 2017. Memorial benches are becoming the popular choice for tributes to local citizens. Love that. So they're becoming more and more common amongst individuals, groups, and organizations. But how do I get one? How to how to buy a bench? Oh, I found something in Central Park Conservancy. Oh, okay. What's in the Central Park Conservancy? <laughs> Uh, adopt a bench. Tell us your story in Central Park and help maintain the park's 10,000 benches and their surrounding landscapes. Oh, wow. That's a lot of benches. Oh, there's a form. Oh, is this a form? Hmm. Let's see what the form is. Should we adopt a bench? <laughs> <laughs> Let's adopt a bench. Okay. Um, oh, my God. Guess how much it is for a bench. How much? Guess. Okay. $5,000 a year. Um, we will acknowledge a donation of ten thousand dollars with a personalized plaque of on, on the bench of your choice. Multiple donors, multiple donors may contribute through an honorary or memorial fund. Full payment must be received before you can reserve a bench. Um, bench adoptions are fully tax deductible, and payments can be made by check, credit card, wire, or stock transfer. We love a wire. Not- <laughs> mm. <The bridge. laughs> yeah. We should talk about that in the economics episode. <laughs> <laughs> we should have. <laughs> uh, not all benches without plaques are available. Please consult our map of available benches, bench locations in Central Park. We are happy to provide maps of any of your preferred locations that have benches available. Wow. You can choose your font. Oh, Comic Sans. <laughs> Wait, does it have a timeline on it? Like, does it tell you how long the $10,000 lasts you? Like, does it last you a year? It doesn't say how long you have it for, but from what it sounds like, it's just like... Indefinite. Yeah. Well, they have 10,000 benches. to donate $10,000. There's not much demand for it. <laughs> and there must be a lot of supply. Economics. <laughs> Economics. I found an article from verywellhealth.com. And it says there's several ways to locate an existing memorial bench program near you. 
Um, this easiest is to simply spot such a bench and then inquire about it. You might find these in a city or state park, on the grounds of hospitals or healthcare facilities. So it really depends on the location of said bench. Um, so they might not be as built out as the Central Park, but oh, opportunities I found to exist. It. I found your answer to the other question. Okay. If you can afford it, it's simple enough. Pay ten thousand dollars. It began at five thousand, mm-hmm. and you will get it. And you will get to put a plaque on a bench saying almost whatever you want within limits of decorum, no cursing, no advertising. Damn, no at Gay Court Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no Gay Court Podcast bench, no search bar podcast bench. Um, up to the suggested maximum of four lines and 30 characters in each line. And then it's there forever. Forever? Forever. And then it says, Damn. Um, consulted her tablet, and the latest count of benches adopted were 4,233. And there's about 250 that get sold each year. Wow. So they're making $250,000 or $2.5 million. 250 times 10, one, two, three. Yeah, $2.5 million a year. Wow. Good for them. Good for them. Yeah. <laughs> really selling those benches. <laughs> Um, well, Lizzie, Emily, hopefully we've answered that question for you all. So that was our 12th episode. I think we did a good job. Um, if you guys enjoyed that, be sure to find us on social at search bar podcast. And my handle is I got shoe back. I G O T S C H U P B A C H across all platforms. Yes. And <laughs> my handle on all platforms is was up. It's Ryan W A Z U P I T S R Y A N. And you can follow us on all platforms at Gay Court Podcast at yes. G A Y C O U R T P O D C A S T, where we discuss and banter all things gay. Gay rights. <laughs> Charlie XCX. <laughs> Incredible. Of course, if you guys want to leave us a good review, send us an email to search for our at gmail.com. We are looking forward to it. And again, thank you, Ryan, for being here. You've been a wonderful guest co host. Outside the Search Bar is a perfectly done toast podcast production. 